do her business. And unfortunately on the Hill, when she did her business, um, she defecated, it uh, took off on her and bounced all the way down the hill and landed in the campfire where all her companions were sitting around sharing stories of the Wild West. It was very difficult for her to walk back into the circle. Now, I want to show some of the serious complications that have emerged because of this particular activity. Sometimes there are dangers beyond the usual, but there are even further dangers and I want you to know about this and beware. <laughs> The little line says uh, that when they p need a piss, that's different. <laughs> anyway, back to the lighthearted side of my presentation. Um, let's turn to the professional world that physicians live and work in. All of us have a problem with producing waste. Hospitals are astonishingly wasteful. I call them a volcano of waste and a black hole for energy. We're just amazingly good at throwing things away in medicine. One of my colleagues, a nursing colleague, had a table. She put all the stuff she had left over from starting one intravenous. She was working in the, in the uh, uh, operating room, admitting patients and getting them ready for surgery. And there was, the whole top of the table was covered with packaging, throwaway items, bits of plastic. And we do this without thinking. And we argue that somehow this is safe for the patient, but most of the time we don't know. We think it's safer. Let me give you one example. When somebody gets a shot, you rub the skin with isopropyl alcohol, 70%. Why? Because you fondly believe, I fondly believed, that it was good for the patient. It got rid of all those nasty germs in the skin. Well, in Cuba, where you have to make your own isopropyl alcohol from local ingredients, it turned out that they didn't think that was necessarily a good idea because they couldn't afford to think it was a good idea without asking is it a good idea first? So they tested it. A colleague of mine, an oncological surgeon, um, had a colleague who did a thousand patients with alcohol and a thousand patients with just a little bit of Kleenex, like that. Turns out there was no difference between the two groups. Ah, no, there was one difference. There was one abscess occurring in the group that got the alcohol. <laughs> now, how many times medical students, physicians, anybody? <laughs> who's in the health professions and hasn't at some point given an injection to somebody and used rubbing alcohol on the skin. I used to use it all the time until I talked to my colleague and said, well, that makes sense because most of the microbes on your skin are actually beneficial. 99.9% .9 of them are there for your health and benefit. Why are you killing them? Why do you kill your friends? You know, as Bernard Shaw says, I'm a vegetarian. I don't, animals are my friends and I don't eat my friends. <laughs> toxics, we are really good at playing around with toxics. It's one of our favorite things. Only recently have we discovered microfiber mops which clean just as well as all the toxic chemicals we've ever used and just have a different structure in their fibers. But we don't think about it very much. What we mostly do when we're talking about infection control is we talk about the presence of bacteria or viruses. We never talk about infection rates, but they're not the same thing. It's like the difference between bone density and fracture risk. If your bone density is down, are you going to have a fracture? Well, as it turns out, not necessarily. In fact, the relationship between the two is very tenuous. But in the area of using toxic poisons to get rid of what we think we should be getting rid of, we never ask that question. We say, if we found a bug, we need a toxic. We need something poisonous to kill that organism. Unfortunately, most of that ends up killing us, or at least making us sick. And if not killing us, or making us sick, it makes our friends, our other animal and plant friends, sick. Energy-saving devices. Again, hospitals consume enormous amounts of electricity. The ecological footprint of the only hospital that's ever been measured 